Excited about Airsoft? Hit the like button and comment to join other Airsofters in the conversation. What's up, Airsofters? If you ever wanted to be instantly the most badass player on the field, this is what you need. If you ever wanted to feel like the T-800 in Terminator 2, this is what you're looking for. If you ever thought to yourself, reloading is lame, sights overrated, and shoulder stocks are for the weak, then this Airsoft gun is what you need in your collection. This is the Classic Army Mini Vulcan electrically powered rotating barrel assembly airsoft minigun. AEG. Jokes aside, this is probably the best, most compact, most functional, and most usable airsoft minigun in the world. And we're gonna tell you all about it, what it's made of, how it performs, and even take a look inside of this unique four piston operated AEG system. This Mini Vulcan represents the current pinnacle of airsoft minigun technology with a very convenient power source. No green gas, no motorcycle batteries, no HPA tanks. Instead, this thing runs on airsoft batteries you already have, and it's all self-contained. Let's go over this beast in detail, tip to tail, tell you what it's made of, show you how it works, and then take it out to the range to destroy some targets. First and foremost, the entire body and bulk of this unit is made of nylon fiber reinforced polymer. Importantly, this keeps the weight down as well as the cost because Let's be honest, this thing is expensive enough as it is. The barrels and the central magazine tube are metal with polymer stabilizing rings. The orange tips are painted on and there's no threading of any sort for any muzzle attachments as it would be cool if you had four tracer units on there, but that would scare the shit. <laughs> Just behind the barrel assembly, there are two sections of pick rail, one on either side. These would be best suited for lights or lasers, which again, let's be real, would be more intimidation than anything else. Just imagine seeing two laser dots tracking you, knowing a hail of plastic that's coming, especially with how many rounds per second this puts down, but we'll get into that in just a minute. The main body houses the guts of the system with a trap door on top that actually lets you adjust the hop up unit of each barrel, but we'll get into that adjustment in just a little bit. On either side of the body, there is a pod. The one on the left side over here houses the batteries and the one on the right here is both the power plant as well as the rate of fire switch. There's a chainsaw style handle on top and at the back, as well as a safety, and a big red trigger. And finally, on the bottom, there are three little feet for when you set this thing down, which is a very nice touch because despite it being made of polymer, this thing is still pretty heavy. It weighs 13 and a half pounds unloaded. Now that's twice as much weight as an M4 AEG, but it's also less than half the weight of many of the other full metal mini guns that came before it. The balance point is very close to the carrying handle, which is how you'll be supporting most of the weight. Needless to say, this is extremely difficult to use one-handed. <laughs> I think that's enough of that. Loading the Mini Vulcan's central magazine tube couldn't be any easier. Starting off, remove the end cap and central plunger, then turn the whole system upright. You're gonna wanna locate this viewing port on the side of the chamber. Then proceed to fill the chamber with BBs until you can see those BBs through the viewing port. That's how you know you're full. Simply replace the plunger and end cap and you're ready to go. For as complex as an AEG with four rotating barrels is, the controls are relatively simple. There's only three things to worry about. First, you have to plug the batteries in. Then there's a big red two-way toggle on the right side. The middle position is off and you can flip it either up or down depending if you want slow at 1500 RPM or fast, which is <laughs> really the only choice in my opinion, which is a meaty 3000 RPM. When you flip the switch, these green lights turn on, telling you that the batteries are connected and healthy. The next thing to do is flip the ambidextrous safety from S to F, 
And lastly, with your target anywhere in front of you, mash the big red trigger and walk it in. This classic Army Mini Vulcan has four individual barrel chambers, one for each barrel. One notable quirk about this system is how you go about adjusting the hop-up for each of those four barrels. Our method involves setting the unit down on a flat surface like this table here, and keeping it pointed downrange away from anybody who could be hit, while manually <laughs> rotating the barrels. Now with the cover open, you can actually see the sliding adjustment for each of those barrels, each sliding adjuster representing the individual hop-up unit for the barrel that it corresponds to. And as you rotate the barrel assembly, it will fire off the topmost barrel which means you need to watch what the BB does and make sure that nobody's in the trajectory as you rotate this by hand, because it will fire even without batteries connected. And so it's a little bit of trial and error, but as you rotate it through and make your adjustments, you can really narrow down that uh, grouping of fire between all four barrels. In order to power this thing, you're gonna need not one, but two 11.1 volt lithium batteries. The battery compartment is here on, in this side tube, and the screw cap reminds you that you do, in fact, need two 11.1 volt batteries. There are two Deans or T-plug connectors right here with a mesh sleeved set of wiring and plenty of space to fit just about any battery you might like. Now we recommend using something with a lot of juice like a Titan Power 11.1 volt lithium ion 3000 milliamp nunchuck. It should give you enough runtime for a game or two. Now while this doesn't get batteries hot, it does use a lot of power. It's moving uh, enough motor to spin four barrels. So you definitely want some, you know, extra juice just to power them, and keeping spare batteries on hand is definitely a good idea as well. The good news is there does seem to be some battery protection inside. The green lights tell you if your battery is good, and then the red light turns on when there's not enough juice to keep it going. So you don't have to worry about trying to plan mentally for when the cells are dying. Now an important note I wanna reiterate here about the electronic system as a whole. The system calls for 11.1 volt LiPos. It's marked on the case for a reason. Not only should the voltage of the two batteries match 11.1 and 11.1, I'm also gonna recommend that you use the same size battery in milliamps. This is so both batteries drain equally and help to ensure that the cells within those batteries remain balanced and safe. Now that we've gone over the basic workings of the system and what makes it up, it's time to do our usual testing regimen. Now with no external magazine, there's no compatibility test. And with four barrels, chronoing this bad boy was definitely interesting, as we have to chrono a single barrel firing at a time. At the chronograph, the Mini Vulcan clocked in at just under 300 FPS with 0.20 gram BBs. Then of course, we had to test it for range and accuracy. See exhibit A. As you can see, great success. I will note, however, that for someone using this as a support gunner or as a squad automatic weapon, this test does actually highlight some useful info. At 50 feet, you're likely to keep most of your hits on a single body size target. And out at 100 feet, you're far more likely to be suppressing the movements of more than one individual. There are some quirks about the Mini Vulcan that I think are worth mentioning. Being such a unique system, this has some things that are very different from what you'd encounter on your typical AEG. The four barrels are on a rotating assembly, and they fire when rotated. Now, like I mentioned during the hop-up adjustment, you can rotate these manually, so you need to be extra careful when this is not in use, because there are BBs loaded in the tube, and you could accidentally shoot one off when you don't intend to. So my suggestion would be to get some sort of stocking or giant barrel sock for this thing when you're in the staging area, since disconnecting the battery won't necessarily prevent it from firing due to manual operation. And if you're anything like us, we couldn't resist rotating the barrels even with the battery uninstalled, so be safe. The way this airsoft gun operates is unlike anything else on the market. Inside is a large spinning mass of metal, bearings, pistons, springs, and barrels. But getting into it takes a bit of doing. Lucky for you, we took ours apart to get a look inside at how this thing works. 
so you don't have to. First order of business is taking off the grip, which is connected by four screws and a single Dean's connector or T-plug. This makes it easy to take apart and opens up a world of possibilities for remote switches. Also exciting is this Airsoft minigun actually has quick change springs. As you spin the barrels, you can see that these spring guides go through the back. Removing the quick change spring guides means that you can tune the FPS quite easily. Driving this machine is probably one of the biggest electric motors in any production airsoft gun. A huge gear interfaces with teeth that go all the way around the internals. Once the barrels come off, you can see that this uses four standard 310 millimeter AEG inner barrels and standard buckings, meaning that R hops and tight bore barrels are both possible. You can also see how the sliders interact with the hop up chambers. Needless to say, these chambers are rather proprietary. The bulk of the internals exist as one whole unit or core, which spins around during operation. This spinning is how it actually fires. The rotating core that contains the pistons, springs, and cylinders interfaces with a spiral protrusion that rounds the inner diameter of the body. A set of bearings, one on each piston, allow each piston to retract and release as the core rotates. The pistons are all aluminum with no teeth, just a big roller bearing and a ported piston head. The cylinders are standard AEG spec and are ported. The cylinder heads are screwed into this assembly here and are backed with hard urethane. The nozzles are all plastic and a part of this larger front assembly. You can see that as the assembly spins, the nozzles move forward and back on their own cam tracks. Pretty wild. Needless to say, almost all of these parts are rather proprietary, but at least it does look like you can replace things and upgrade key elements if necessary. All right, let's be real here. For this price, this isn't for your average airsofter. Or is it? I mean, that begs the question, who is this for? Why does this exist? It's expensive, somewhat heavy, and not super easy to use and wield or run around with, and not easy to reload or aim precisely, and probably isn't gonna be legal in any serious milsim game. But to answer the latter, I think it exists because it can, and because it's awesome. And the former is that for any airsoft collector who has one of everything, it is everything we've ever wanted in airsoft, full auto, mass amounts of BBs flying, and whether you wanted to feel like the Terminator, or you're a field owner that wants to incorporate it into a game type, or imagine yourself as a juggernaut in a juggernaut game, or a D-Day type game where this is a defensive position attempting to keep people from flooding over defense positions. And no matter how you use this, it's really, really awesome. And to get your very own classic army mini Vulcan, you can check it out right here on our website at evic.com. Thanks for watching. Don't miss out on the action. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Instagram, check out our TikTok, and join us on Facebook for everything Airsoft.